Okay, it's really happening. These are the latest smart speakers from Sonos, the ERA 300 and the ERA 100. If you've been following my work at The Verge lately, you've known these have been on the way since August, and a few weeks ago we spilled the full details. Today, Sonos is finally announcing them. You can order both ERA speakers starting now, and they'll be in stores on March 28th. So we already knew a lot about them, but now we've gotten a chance to see and hear the 300 and 100 in person. It's a big moment for the company, and I think Sonos fans have a lot to be excited about. Okay, let's start with the ERA 100, which costs $249. Sonos sees this as a remaster of the Sonos One. This is the speaker you buy for someone who just wants the nice thing that sounds surprisingly good. The 100 has a similar overall size, but it's more rounded now. Inside, there are two tweeters instead of just one, so it's now capable of playing proper stereo sound. It's still one speaker, so don't expect much separation, but at least you're getting left and right channels and not losing anything in the mix. Sonos has also made the midwoofer larger for more powerful bass response across the volume range. Speaking of, the controls have also been changed up a bit. There's a new indent for volume controls. You can tap a finger on either side or swipe across to adjust. So the sound quality has improved, but I'm more excited that the ERA 100 just does new things. Sonos has added Bluetooth and Line In to both ERA speakers, and the Sonos One didn't do any of that. In fact, Sonos used to make fun of Bluetooth and ads that showed music being interrupted by phone notifications and so on. From what CEO Patrick Spence told me, times have changed. I think the technologies have evolved in such a way that we can provide the experience that we want to, and so Bluetooth's gotten much more reliable. Really on the line in, one of the things has been the prevalence of turntables and the resurgence of vinyl, and a lot of people asking us, hey, I want to plug it in, you know, to my Sonos speaker. And so we're like, okay, like this is a real thing happening we've heard from a lot of customers on, so let's figure out a way to give them that choice. Then we come to the ERA 300. This new speaker is built from the ground up for spatial audio. Just look at this thing. It costs $449 and has a design unlike any of Sonos's previous speakers. Sonos describes it as an hourglass shape, and opinions online have been pretty mixed. But this is a case where Sonos prioritized function over form. There are six drivers inside that direct sound forward, left, right, and up. We use the term room-filling sound a lot when talking about speakers, but in this case, yeah, it, it's legit. By itself, one ERA 300 can play spatial audio from Amazon Music Unlimited, and Sonos says support for Apple Music's Atmos tracks are coming this spring. Now, you've heard the hype a lot, but we're still in the early days of spatial audio music. You know, that whole transition from mono to stereo, you know, took years, right? And, and this will be the same, where, you know, not everybody's going to switch overnight. Um, there will be strong opinions uh, on either side of the equation of, you know, of the, you know, of, of the way they experience it. Um, but we think it is the future. So in that sense, the ERA 300's funky design is necessary to get the most out of spatial audio from a single speaker. That's according to Giles Martin, who is Sonos' head of sound experience, and he took a little shot at the HomePod while talking through Sonos' reasoning. Spatial audio has to be forward-facing and immersive. And if by the, by the function of form and fit of the speaker, it is forward-facing and immersive, opposed to a, a circular object which, which will just fire audio in all directions. That's not how we listen to music, you know, we, uh, you know even a performance is, is in front of you. So there's a reason why it's, we've gone down that route. Thing is, a lot of early Dolby Atmos song mixes, well, they suck. You can find some great ones here and there, but 90% of the time, stereo is still the way to go. So as an industry, everybody has to move forward together, device makers, record producers, and so on, before this format can truly stand on its own. Sonos says it's giving out ERA 300s to music producers and studios so they can hear music how you'll hear it when you have one at home. Now, Neil I had a long chat about spatial audio with Patrick and Giles, so be sure to check that out. And Sonos will be keeping the Sonos 5 around for people who prefer the highest fidelity stereo experience. That speaker still gets louder and kicks out more bass than either of these two. But the ERA 300 isn't just about music, it's also built for home theater and owners of the Sonos Arc. If you're willing to fork out $900 for two of them, you can use a pair as rear surrounds. And since they fire sound in several directions, you're getting a more immersive Atmos audio behind you than from any other Sonos speaker. But $900 is a lot of money. Sonos also just raised the price of its mid-level beam soundbar to $499. Just like all tech brands nowadays, Sonos is putting a bigger emphasis on repairability with both era speakers. They use more recycled materials and screws in place of glue and adhesives. So that's one important step, but 
What about selling parts and letting people do their own repairs? We pack a lot in there, in a lot in a tight space, and so it's it's the practical reality of how do you balance those two things of making it easily repairable, but at the same time, you know, you want to be able to make kind of the tightest form factors you can and use that air um, in a smart way. But uh, no, no, you know, there's no religious debate about it. It's more, can we practically do something like that? Yeah. Turns out there's a very active Sonos community on Reddit. So I turned there for a few questions. Some people worried about planned obsolescence of their old speakers now that Sonos has new ones coming. So I asked Patrick whether the Play 1, Play 3, and Play 5 still have years and years of life left in them. Back when we started the company, you know, and we were we were passionate about building products that would last for a long, long time, but you know, nobody could see 15 years into the future or any of those things, and now we're 20 years into the future. But you now see us as well incorporating things like Bluetooth and other technologies like Line In, which also, you know, will help support and future-proof. There are others who are disappointed that Sonos didn't build up-firing Atmos drivers into the Era 100. And according to Giles Martin, they never even tested such an idea. With the Era 100, it is a single-box stereo unit, and we're honest about what it does, okay? We're not going to say it does spatial audio, because it doesn't do spatial audio. We're not going to put a brand on it so it does spatial audio um, or, or attempt virtualization, because it is, we, our, our key thing when it comes to audio is honesty. Many of you asked why a soundbar always has to be the front fixture of every single Sonos home theater setup. Why not let people use two Era 300s as dedicated left and right front speakers? Yeah, I mean, we thought about that quite often this fit and form. You know, people don't have, people don't have space next to their televisions. And right now we have three incredible soundbars that that fit that purpose, and they do provide an amazing, uh, both home theater and music experience for it. Take that answer how you will. Maybe it'll happen someday, but for now, it's very clear that Sonos likes to sell sound bars. And those are the Era 300 and Era 100. We're gonna start testing them very soon and putting them up against the HomePod and other smart speakers over the next few weeks. So let me know what you're curious about and keep it locked on The Verge for more reviews and other videos.